But there's nothing I love more than when a new deacon or elder in a moment of honesty says, I don't know what I'm doing. Because the first thing I would say is, praise God, you're ready. If you have to visit somebody whose spouse has died, you call me and say, what are the right words I'm going to say? I have no idea. Go there and suffer with them. Go into the pain of death and be with them. There is no preparation. There is no self-confidence. There is only God confidence. Those of you who want to take notes, I encourage you to take them now. There are basically three ways the calling equips us. I'm going to name three of them. One, it is knowing that we are the called that equips us for, with knowing whom to trust. If we are called, we are called by somebody. We are the called. That is our identity. God, God calls us. Therefore, our trust is in Him alone. Second, it is knowing that it is knowing what He calls us to do that gives us our focus. It sets our agenda. Our priorities, purposes, and mission are set. We get that to-do list in part from Scripture. The Great Commission is our marching orders. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all I have done to, com uh, and to command you. Thirdly, the calling equips us by comforting us. How is it a comfort? This is a little bit of irony here, because no one likes the calling of God comforting at first, right? In fact, that's why they would want to reject it. Jesus tells his disciple John, when you were young, you went about as you may, but when you are old, another will bind you and lead you where you do not wish to go. Well, that is the nature of the calling, and that is disturbing more than anything. <laughs>